In this video, I will be going through 15 tips that will greatly improve your ability to create your very own data packs inside of Minecraft. I put timestamps in the description of the video if you would like to skip around, and I will also include some footage in this video of me testing my tank data pack, which should have its own video released within a couple of weeks. And if you need help setting up a data pack, I have a tutorial on my channel, which you should go check out. So let's get into the 15 tips for developing data packs efficiently. So the first and probably one of the most important tips for starting a data pack is to thoroughly plan your entire idea out. And when you're planning, make sure you keep in mind what exactly you want and how you're going to do it. And you have to keep in mind your own abilities and limitations, and you have to keep in mind the limitations of the game. Because you don't want to start a data pack and then figure out halfway through that what you want to do in the data pack is literally impossible to do in the game. So make sure you understand what the capabilities of the game are. And also, you should start with something on the easier side because it's better to complete something really quickly than to choose something hard, get discouraged, and then not finish the project. Project. And now the next tip, which might not seem like a tip, it might seem obvious, but it's to get started. It doesn't matter how much you plan if you don't actually get started on making the data pack. So I think you should start making the data pack early on. I recommend using some sort of template. I have a template on my tutorial video on how to start a data pack, but you should just get started so that you could get a feel for making a data pack and actually continue and follow through with your plans that you make. So the next couple tips are about some tools that you could use to help develop your data pack. So the first one is to use the F3 menu. If you don't know, if you hit F3 or FN F3 on your keyboard, it pulls up the Minecraft debugging menu, but this is really useful because it gives you information such as your current coordinates, it gives you your rotation, and you could also use the other lesser known functions such as the chunk borders and the hitboxes to use for certain things such as what I used it for is looking at the hitbox and the rotation of the armor stands that I used. So there's a lot of functionality that comes with F3 and you should really take a look at it. So the next one is about using online tools such as MC Stacker. If you go to mcstacker.net, you'll be able to use this command generator, which is super, super useful. I use it all the time to help generate commands. And it makes it a lot easier than typing your syntax manually because it generates it for you. And it also lets you see what is available for entity customization and item customization in Minecraft, which makes it easier. But you still do, you still should learn the syntax, but this makes it a lot easier to generate commands. There's also a couple of other online command generators that you could use, such as armor stand posers if you find a need for something like that, but you could just look around and see what's available. Another useful tool, this isn't really data pack specific, it's mainly for resource packs, but that's really useful for data packs if you're trying to make custom items. Blockbench is really useful for creating those custom models and custom textures because it's all in one package. It's the creation of the model, it's the creation of the textures, and it's the posing of the textures inside of, for example, an armor stand's hand. And it's really useful if you're trying to make something such as the custom tank which I'm making. I designed the entire model inside of here and I posed it inside of there so that when I summoned it into the world, it came in exactly how I wanted it. The next tip is about what is probably the most useful command in Minecraft for developing data packs, and that is the slash execute command. This command is the most used command in my tank data pack because of the large variety of capabilities that this command offers. For example, it lets you run commands from the position of certain entities, it could let you position commands relative to the entities, and it lets you detect certain entities and certain blocks. In addition to the plethora of useful settings, it lets you stack them on top of each other to create a complex chain of tests and command position changes and other things like that in order to get the desired outcome. An example of how I used it is that I ran a command from all players who were riding a specifically tagged minecart who were also meeting certain tag requirements while also holding a care on a stick, and if all of those conditions were met, then it would run as the closest tagged armor stand within a two block radius who met certain scoreboard requirements and then ran a teleportation command on that armor stand to move it forward. And so that was for the movement of the tank itself to detect what ability they're holding. And it is just a overall versatile command that is completely necessary and will make your data pack creation so much better. So this next section is going to be about all of the tips and tricks that will help you with prototyping your data pack, testing your data pack, and bug squashing in your data pack. 
So the first thing is to use the slash data get command and this command will give you basically all of the NBT data for an entity or for a block entity, tile entity. So the block entities would be things like chests, dispensers, mostly things that have some sort of inventory. And then getting the data would be for any entity that would be like a mob, zombie, slime, armor, stand, things like that. And it gives you back all the tags and all the data about it. And this really helps you understand the syntax because it puts it gives it to you in the correct syntax and format. And it also teaches you what kind of abilities and NBT data certain entities have. So the next tip is pretty simple. It's basically just to use easier to work with scales and easier to work with states during your prototyping. What I mean by this is instead of, for example, teleporting items 256 blocks above your head, which is what I did to save the inventory for the player and the tank data pack, when you're prototyping it, just teleport the items five blocks up above the player so you could actually see and confirm that what you're doing is working because it's really hard to confirm that what you're doing is working when the items are 256 blocks above you. So when you're prototyping, use something easy to work with and then change it later. And another example is if you have invisible armor stands to make things work, at first keep them not invisible so you could see them moving around and see them doing what you want them to do and you could easily see a visual reference for what if what you're doing is working. So a really short tip is to just test very often because it's really important that you constantly test so if something goes wrong you know what went wrong because you just put it in there because if you code a bunch of stuff and then you go to test it, you're gonna have to jump around between your files to figure out what went wrong. So if you test often, you're gonna know what you just changed and how to change it back. Now, if you're ever testing your data pack and some of it's not running where you think it should be running, what you could do is replace your own commands with slash say, so you could easily see if the command's running or not, because it's a lot easier to test that than something else like teleportation of an invisible armor stand. And you could also use slash say just, just like in this example, just to double check that what you're doing is working before you move on and add more steps and make it more complicated. So the next tip is something you should always do before testing your data pack. So after you slash reload your data pack into your world, make sure you do slash function and then type in whatever your pack name is so that you could check to make sure that all of your files actually loaded in. Because if one of your files has an error, it's not gonna load in and it'll be really obvious and there's no point in testing if there's an error and one of your files isn't running. Now the next and final set of tips is all gonna be about organization. Now it might seem boring or unnecessary, but organization of your data pack is very important and in a large data pack could really make the difference between you being overwhelmed and confused by all of your code everywhere or you being able to actually complete your data pack because you know whatever, where everything is and how everything's working. So the first tip to start off the organization section is to divide your groups of similar commands into separate function files that are separate from the looping file and this separates functions so that you don't have to have the same repeating conditions over and over. So for example, if you have like 50 commands that are all running anytime a player has a diamond, instead of putting if player has diamond do this, if player has diamond do that, 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 and you just have to keep repeating it, instead you just loop one function file if the player is holding a diamond and then put all the other commands and just put it inside of the function file so you don't have to keep repeating the same thing over and over. And this also makes your code a lot more clean and a lot less messy. And another thing to organize your actual function files themselves is to use hashtags, number signs, pound symbols, whatever you want to call them. You could use those to divide your code into sections so it's a lot easier to read and it's a lot easier to go back and forth between files and copy paste or just go through and edit whatever commands that you need to edit. And if you didn't know, hashtags are actually comments so anything you type after a hashtag will not be ran as a command. So the next tip is pretty small but it's pretty important. I wish I knew it earlier because it makes it easier to make large data packs but it's basically to write down at the top of the function file how or where the function is being called from. So basically if you're calling the function from another function file at the position of a player as that player then you want to write that at the top of the function so you don't have to go back and forth to double check where the function is being called from. And the last tip and a pretty small tip but a pretty important tip if you're doing large data packs is to use common naming practices for your tags and some are being shown right here but this is very important because first of all it prevents bugs so you don't have to go back and check your uh, code for errors because you accidentally put an underscore in the wrong spot 
and it also makes it a lot easier for you to not go back and forth between all of your code so you have to double check your tags so instead what you do is you pick a common naming practice and use it for everything and you also use the first thing that comes to mind so it's very obvious to you and very easy for you to constantly reference the tag or the custom named armor stand or whatever you're using. So I hope these tips helped you out. Now go out there and make your own data packs.